。美国共和党领袖波纳和党员夺回众议院控制权，将在本周三重返华府。首要的任务是废除去年奥巴马通过的全民健保改革法案。不过，这个议程应该会被参议院挡下，加上奥巴马也可以行使否决权。如果无法完全废除法案，共和党已宣誓，他们将慢慢的撤销健保改革，让法案最终作废。Well, thanks to Next Media Animation for that. And yes, in the first full week of the new Congress, Republicans in the House plan on a vote on repealing the Affordable Health Care Act. The GOP's attack comes just as many popular provisions of that act are kicking in. And repeal itself is probably a long shot. But even without repeal, the GOP may be able to chip away. They can hold a whole series of hearings, and they can certainly fuel hostility. First and foremost, toward the individual mandate—that's the rule that requires everyone to buy health insurance. Many progressives share qualms about the mandate. Can healthcare reform survive without it? Is it really what reformers want to spend their days fighting for? Today, a debate with Maggie Mahar, author of *Money Driven Medicine*, and Jamie Court, president of Consumer Watchdog. Let's start with you, Maggie. I always like to start on the positive, and you're a good person to come to for that. <laughs> There are a whole lot of new things kicking in for people right now, this January. Like what? Oh, absolutely.、Um, people, more people are going to have access to care. People in their early 20s are going to be able to be covered by their parents' insurance. Um, and already on the ground, reform is happening. In communities, hospitals and doctors are getting together, networking, collaborating, changing the way care is paid for. Not fee for service, but moving to capitated care, other forms of payment which reward better outcomes rather than rewarding volume. All this is terribly important. States are already setting up their exchanges. You know, in Virginia, the court ruled against the mandate. Well, guess what? The state of Virginia is setting up an exchange.、Mm. They know this is going to go forward. And as more things happen on the ground, it becomes harder and harder to undo it because people are going to like the things they have. Small employers are picking up the tax credit, offering insurance to their employees. What's going on in Washington right now is a charade. A complete waste of time, and what's really troubling is that Congress should be tending to the people's business, and the people's business right now is jobs and the economy. All right. Well, before we get to what Congress has planned, in terms of what's kicking in, Jamie, to you, if you went looking for that reimbursement for those advanced planning conversations about end-of-life care, you wouldn't find it. What happened? Let's、we'll、start with you, Jamie. Well, look, you know. The president revised the Medicare rules, so he wasn't susceptible to the notion that there are death panels or anything near a death panel. So there won't be end of life discussions.、Uh, but what I, I think is really key on this health reform plan is that a Virginia judge struck down mandatory health insurance, just the notion that people will have to buy it, saying that a government、uh, can't force people to buy a private commodity, a private、uh, product.、Uh, And he didn't strike down any of that rest of the health reform law. And my belief is, progressives should be cheering if that is the final verdict on health reform, because the least popular provision of health reform is mandatory health insurance. Seventy percent of the public doesn't want to be forced to buy a private insurance policy.、Uh, the the other provisions of health reform,、uh, subsidies for the poor, very popular.、Uh, the rules that say、uh, you know you can't be charged based on your medical condition.、Uh, rules that say you shouldn't you should be given a policy regardless of your Pre-existing condition. These are very popular、uh, provisions, and in states like、uh, New York, for instance, they have no mandatory health insurance. You do have a provision that says、uh, everyone has to be given a health insurance policy, and you can't be charged based on your medical condition. So, it, health reform can work without mandatory right, insurance. So, Maggie, do you not only、yeah. is it separable? You can, in fact, have、um, health care without the mandates. Absolutely the not. That's absolutely untrue. And everyone, particularly progressives, have to understand this. In New York State, you do have to have health insurance. We don't have a mandate. We have a law that says you have to be continuously insured. If I want to buy insurance, I have to show that I was insured before that. That's very similar to having a mandate. That's one reason why insurance is more expensive in New York than it is in, say, California, because everyone does have to be insured,、um, and it's. 
Insurers cannot cherry pick. They cannot refuse to insure me because of my pre-existing conditions, which they can in California. In terms of the mandate, this is what everyone has to understand. If we don't have a mandate, we will not and cannot require insurers to insure me if I have a pre-existing condition or to charge me the same amount. If we don't have a mandate, then anyone will wait until they get sick and then apply for insurance. That means you wind up with a pool of very sick people who are insured and healthy people who are waiting until they need it. But that even, makes insurance even unaffordable. Candidate Obama was against the mandate. No, let's, he was let's not. Let's listen to what he had to say I, in this debate okay. with Hillary Clinton. Understand that when Senator Clinton says a mandate, it's not a mandate on government to uh, provide health insurance. It's a mandate on individuals to purchase it. And Senator Clinton is right. We have to find out what works. Now, Massachusetts has a mandate right now. They have exempted 20% of the uninsured because they've concluded that that 20% can't afford it. In some cases, there are people who are paying fines and still can't afford it. So now they're worse off than they were. They don't have health insurance and they're paying a fine. So he was against it then. Actually, I talked to his health care expert, David Cutler, the day after that debate. And what David Cutler told me, and I reported at the time, is that President Obama understood that we will have to have a mandate, but he'd like to wait and see how many people might sign up first. Mm. But he knew. Mm. This was really a political ploy on Obama's part. He had a great many youthful, very young, very selfish followers who did not want to have to pay for health insurance right, for so you or Jamie, I. Jamie, are you just selfish? I'm, I'm terribly selfish. I don't want to be forced by the government to spend 8% of my income on health insurance uh, if I don't get a subsidy and I, make, uh, and I have a family for it, $88,000 a year, or pay a 2% fine on my income. I want the government to give me a public option. I want the government to regulate my health insurance premiums. But the I want people, the government that's all to very lower, nice, Jamie, that, but here's that, the, that here's the facts. None of that was in the health reform bill. Okay. So to me, the fact is this. Look, in New York, you don't have to have continuous coverage. You can get a policy with, based on, uh, uh, regardless of your pre-existing condition history. Premiums are high. There's no question. But Massachusetts, which has a mandate, has uh, premiums that are actually higher by many measures than New York. They also have uh, uh, health care costs, which are very high. What they've done, though, is lowered the uninsured rate through mm -hmm. mandatory health insurance. But they've done it by giving subsidies, huge subsidies to people to buy insurance. So, all right, so I'm all Jamie's, for subsidizing insurance. Yeah. Jamie's I'm just, coming at this from it could get us closer to a public option. Um, absolutely not. We will only get a public option, and I think we will. But first of all, a public option will not save that much. Commonwealth Fund, which does excellent research, says that this was about nine months ago, that a family plan would cost 13000 through a private insurer, through a public option, 12000 There's a savings in administrative costs. They're not that big. But what it's is a savings to me, the insured person. Of $1,000. That's right. Um, that family that earns more than $88,000, okay, is going to wind up paying 8% or more of their income on health care in Europe where they have universal coverage, where everyone is covered, you are expected to pay 10% of your income toward your health care before the government provides mm -hmm. help for you. Now, that's the cost of insuring everyone. You know, people Jamie, don't... come back in. Look, there's a difference between forcing people to participate in a Medicare for All program, which I am all for, based on taxation, and forcing people to buy a private health insurance product where an insurance company executive makes tens of millions of dollars a year, and we're subsidizing insurance companies to process claims and not pay us many of the times we, want, we need to be paid Jamie, and have our claims paid. Do you have any because idea are... how much Medicare for All would cost you? 16000 17000 conservatively. Medicare is filled okay. with waste. It's a very, very okay. expensive okay, program. There's a difference That's between why it's and going it's... broke. Jamie. There is a difference between mandatory participation based on taxation in a public program where you have representation and mandatory participation uh, in an insurance market where Blue Cross and Aetna, because I work with patients who every day are getting denied claims by Blue Cross and Aetna, still have that power right. to deny you and shaft you. And you have to pay a lot of money to subsidize corporate Under health care reform, insurers do not, not have the, the power to well, deny you. These, this is just not true. I mean, it really frustrates me when people, good progressive people spread misinformation because it confuses so many people. Under health care reform, insurers cannot deny you. Under health care reform, insurers cannot 
charge you more if you have a pre-existing condition. But they um, can hike rates. They you claims like they do every day, and you have to fight them to get your claims yeah. paid. That's absolutely let's, let's, not true, let's, okay? Let's just well, you're let's switch to the What insurers are going to be doing, and what Medicare is going to be doing, is refusing to pay for ineffective treatment. All right, hold, let's go back to the 90s. Hold it there one second, and let's talk about the politics for a second. Mm -hmm. Because, well, for one thing, it seems to me you have insurers, meaning the insurance companies, on the side of mandates. Take a look. What's important is this individual mandate is really a hinge point to hold together the whole bill and without it it's going to be really a, a problem to hold it all together as a former health insurance executive if the health insurers are in favor of the mandate and even some leading, leading republicans are in favor of it here is uh, Mitt Romney talking on Larry King earlier this year Many of my positions, I believe, are very conservative, all of them, frankly. Uh, I know some people say, gee, your Massachusetts health care plan isn't conservative. I say, oh, yes, it is. Because right now in this country, people that don't health, have health insurance go to the hospital if they get a serious illness, and they get treated for free by government. My plan says, no, they can't do that. No more free riders. People have to take personal responsibility. I consider it a conservative plan. Where is the support going to come from, Jamie, for these attacks on mandates, if not from the industry and from some leading Republicans? Well, look, uh, the, the insurance companies developed the mandatory plan uh, through uh, an economist, uh, Mark Pauley, who made the recommendation H. W. Bush as a counter to universal health reform. But the, the selling to progressives was, we're going to give you the public option. We're going to give you an alternative to the private market. This is a moral issue, I think. If you're going to be forced into the system, you should have a choice of a public insurance plan. You shouldn't have to go with a private company because they operate differently than government. And you're not represented uh, by the CEOs of private companies. And they can and do deny and delay claims. And we don't have laws ample to stop them from doing it. It's, it's, a, it's a very sad system that we're forcing people into. So the reality is... Um, people are going to continue to be frustrated with the private insurance companies. They're going to be forced by the government in 2014 to, to, do, to be either be fined yeah. through taxes or pay a big part of their income for health insurance, and they're going to be angry. That makes the rest of health reform, all the great stuff that I love and your other guests love, completely unsustainable well, in the long run because you can't run against 70% public opinion. Here, Maggie, it yeah. seems to me is that a lot of this is about playing the refs, is about party political maneuvering and sending messages and building up for a partisan fight in this 2012. But let me just ask you a question. Yeah. If the Democrats seem to have rolled over so easily on this question of, you know, end of life care conversations. No, they did not roll where over. Where is there going to be I'm fight? Sorry, is there going to be fight? That's more misinformation. I think Jamie tried to clear this up. I did before the show started. We now have end of life counseling. It's back in. President Obama passed, uh, issued a regulation a couple of weeks ago saying that Medicare will pay for end-of-life counseling in your annual physical, okay? That's now back in. It was taken out of the legislation, and once again, President Obama showed that he doesn't have to go through Congress to get things done. He issued a regulation, and that's it. On the individual mandate, 12 courts have already refused to even hear the case. Constitutionally, there's no basis for it whatsoever. Right, I've talked to Timothy Jostia. Yeah. Maggie Mahar and Jamie Court, thank you both. We'll conti continue to talk about this on Grit TV. That's where you can find the links to both their groups, too. Thanks.